True living Africa. True living Africa. Hello, Africa. Welcome to True Living Africa. I am Uyok Hansen. And I am Oni Talabi. And we are your, your wellness, wellness coaches. coaches. We're here to support you on your journey to stay well. Follow us on Instagram at True Living Africa, at Africa Business Radio, on Instagram, Twitter, and www.africabusinessradio.com. So, Oni, how have you been? Been good. Been Great. Good. I've been good. Lockdown lifted. Amazing. Still not going out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Keeping movement to a minimal, but mm-hmm. doing good, doing good. How about you? Not bad. Today we're talking about, we're going to be continuing our obesity, obesity. series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the last time we were here, we talked about a few, we introduced the issue of obesity, obesity. right? Mm-hmm. And um, how and why obesity is such a big deal, how it's one of the world's... Um, Top health problems. Yeah. It's a global health issue. It is. Leading cause of death, you know, because of all the attendant complications that yeah. come with obesity. Yeah. And um, we talked about, you know, sort of how people find themselves obese. And we want to mm-hmm. dive a Some little bit more. Some of the different factors that, mm-hmm. that can cause it. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be diving a little bit more on this episode mm-hmm. um, into obesity. And we're looking particularly at something that's not popular knowledge because the general equation that everyone knows is calories in calories out yeah yeah the first you know cause of obesity obviously is um consuming more calories than you burn yeah. so the whole idea is that if you're not as active as you're meant to be and you eat more than you burn you store your excess energy as yeah, which I have to admit that having a fitness background, which I, I think I mentioned last um, episode as well, mm-hmm. that was the, the mentality I had as well. So right. when I'd see people that were obese, it was all overweight. Right. Um, it was like, mm, yeah. it's a movement thing or it's what they're eating. But then going on that, um, well, my dive was through going through the functional medicine side and just tracking food and, right. you know, working with people that were doing the work. Mm-hmm. And the weight wasn't shifting. Right. And then I said, mm, there must be other factors Absolutely. involved. And, you know, we talked about all the other things that could happen mm-hmm. from that slows the metabolism, mm-hmm. hormone imbalances, yeah. and even the genes as well. So, yeah, it is, it is a, an aspect that most of us do not pay attention to. Yes. Because the, the causes are, the causes are indeed multifaceted. Um, and so this podcast episode is dedicated to everyone who has ever struggled with their weight, but yeah. not for reasons that popular logic suggests. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And because people are more than ever dieting, they're more than ever, you know, taking up workout programs and, yeah. and, and I just realized that the, you know, what a lot of, what, what a lot of the fitness world sells to, you know, Everyone is not going to fix everyone's overweight issues because not everyone is plagued by the same lack of movement and eating thing. Yeah, I mean, if we look at it, that every human body is different. Everybody's func- everybody functions differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a general template, but mm-hmm. everybody's designed differently. differently. Yeah. And so we all respond to different things differently. So the way that I, I mean, granuts is my peanuts are my go to. Um, example for me personally. Right. And uh, in my family, the way I re- react to peanuts is completely different from the way every other person in my family responds to it. Mm-hmm. And so if we bring that back to even lifestyle, um, diseases and ailments, the factors might be, you know, everybody, let's just like we take obesity. We can have 10 different obese people mm-hmm. and have 10 different Treatment underlying causes. factors. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I and, know. And so the big thing we're talking about today is hormones. Hormones. Yes, because we've realized that diet and exercise are a small part of the obesity treatment. Um, however, today we're looking at 
hormones and obesity and what people like to throw around saying oh hormonal imbalance what is hormonal imbalance and what are these factors? What are hormones? What are even hormones? What are hormones? Because yes. everybody says hormones and it's always like, okay, so what are yeah. hormones? Maybe not those things that make you feel frisky. No, not necessarily. Not only. There are mm-hmm. some that make you feel frisky, but not only. But hormones are um, secreted in the body by different glands mm-hmm. and they help. They're essential for growth, for development, for reproduction. That's the freak, frisky part of it. Mm. And also they are basically chemical substances that your body produces from your food. Right. And also from what you put in, it goes into your gut. And in that space, most of your hormones are produced, not only in your gut, but by the time all the nutrients are spread out, then your body starts to produce a different hormones. So I like to look at hormones like the engine oil. Or the messengers. They are messengers. Mm-hmm. And no, they are messengers, carrying messages all around right. the body. So I think of them as um, engine oil that just help to lubricate the, the, ma- the, the machine, yes. <laughs> the different functions of the machine. So mm-hmm. if your machine does not have enough engine oil, if it doesn't have enough hormones, mm-hmm. then you have an imbalance. Yes. And, uh, and it's not just one hormone, even though if there's an imbalance in one hormone, it most likely is affecting another one, another one. Yes. And then because your body is now striving for balance, it's trying to, um, yeah, the to body manage. Lo- yes. The body loves homostasis. It likes to be in a state of balance. Yeah. And once we're out of balance, then things start to go wrong. There's pain. Yeah. You know, you're just resisting treatment of all sorts. And so it becomes difficult for people with hormonal imbalances to respond to a typical weight management. Or to respond to anything program. because hormones yeah. affect everything. They affect the way we think. They mm-hmm. affect even our body shape. They right. affect um, the way we digest. They affect our reproduction. You know, they affect Everything. So if there's an hormonal imbalance, it could it could manifest in any way. You could just find yourself crying all the time and you're wondering, okay, what's going on? Absolutely. Particularly women. Women in particular understand. Yep, guilty as charged. <laughs> hormonal <laughs> imbalances because when our period is coming, right? I know uh, the hormones just go out of what? Omg. For lack of a better phrase. Omg. <laughs> and then we now have, um, and then when you're now um, approaching, so there's. Puberty, mm-hmm. everybody goes through that. Yeah. I know. And then when you now start approaching menopause, right. that's another level of yeah. imbalances. But I'll just, I know we're not talking about menopause and all, but just to mention, just to drop that there, that it is not normal for you to have a crazy menopause because we've accepted that story that yeah. Everybody should have a crazy menopause. Everybody should have crazy periods. It's yeah. a hormonal imbalance. imbalance. Absolutely. And can be can worked treated. out, treated with herbs. And even lifestyle herbs. Yep. Yeah. So, Absolutely. And nutrition. And nutrition. So bringing it back to, to our obesity, obesity. Our obesity factor. Mm-hmm. So, um, when our obesity expression, our so, obesity expression, so expression, expressing, expressing itself, hormonal yes. imbalance. Mm-hmm. We're looking at essentially three things today. Uh, we're not going to go into too many. We're just going to touch on three things that, um, are hormone related that yes. can lead to weight gain, especially what something we call in fitness circles unintentional weight gain. I'm doing the work. I try hard, but it's not working. And um, I was actually going to say, is that intentional weight gain? But then I now remember some skinny people that say, Oh, I want to put on weight. I want to. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, there is. There yes. is. And then there's the, you know, the type that the lockdown one that you know. <laughs> that was not intentional. You know, it's <laughs> inevitable weight gain. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with your hormones. It's all Netflix and, you know, and the kitchen. We blame Koro. Right, right. So, um, so different things. So we're talking about. So the first thing, mm-hmm. um, that's very common is what we call the circadian disruption obesity. Um, breaking it down, mm-hmm. basically disruption in your sleep cycles. Yeah. Okay. And this is very common among people who work nights. Yes. Who have insomnia. Creatives. Creative yes. people, business people, mm-hmm. especially those of us that like to work at night. Right. So, right. yeah. So, and because the, the body is wired in a way that you're, you have an, you have an internal body clock, what we call the circadian rhythm. Yeah. That rises with the sun and sets, you know, and then your yeah. serotonin levels, um, 
your serotonin levels rise in the evening because your body wants to be more peaceful and it's sort of Starts shutting to down. relax, yeah. Yes, and then your Preparing cortisol. Preparing for nighttime. Yes, your cortisol, that is the go, the go, go, go hormone. Yeah. Starts to rise around when the sun rises, well, sort yeah. of preparing you to wake up. And that's how come some people have, you know, some people say, oh, I don't even need my alarm, you know, that once it's, you know, 5 a.m., the you know, body I just wakes wake up. You know, my body just wakes up. And once it's uh, 10 p.m., I can't stay awake no matter what I do. Yeah. So it's your body's internal clock. But when that internal clock is disrupted, it's thrown off. Um, it then starts to wreak havoc with those hormones that help you stay awake and help you fall asleep. Yeah. And um, when that starts to happen, you see that your cortisol levels become like stress. You know, the stress yeah. hormones begin so to So your body rise. goes into a state of stress. Absolutely. More or less. So your body goes into the state of stress and you begin to see, it begins to manifest in areas like abdominal fat. Um, so just, just not what's well, a button. Yeah. So when your body is in a state of stress, remember when, um, let's think of the hunters back then, mm -hmm. our forefathers. Yeah. When <laughs> you're in a state of stress, the stress then is, uh, it's a uh, cortisol is also the fight or flight. Absolutely. Um, Very useful. Um, yeah, exactly. So you have that response. You know, you see a lion, you need to run mm -hmm. for your life. Yeah. However, for your body to be able to achieve the speed or the momentum it needs to outrun that lion. It starts to, sh it starts to conserve energy. Cause remember, the body is innately intelligent. Right. So it wants to outrun the lion and preserve itself. Mm -hmm. So it starts to shut down blood flow, oxygen flow to mm -hmm. certain parts of the body and then it pumps it to other parts of the body. Mm -hmm. So digestion, metabolism, all of those things slow down because you don't They're need no them longer. when you're running. Exactly. And so if your metabolism slows down, mm -hmm then your body is not going to be burning as efficiently. Exactly. And so if you're now in, if you're permanently in a state of stress, you are inevitably going to put on weight. Mm -hmm. And if you're now exercising, but not dealing with the source of the stress. source of the stress, which is that your body is releasing all this cortisol, it's, you know, it's trying to preserve itself, then you're still not going to achieve the weight loss that you're trying to achieve. Absolutely, because exercise actually increases your cortisol levels. So your body is even becoming more stressed. Yeah, becoming even more stressed. And then dieting also um, increases your cortisol levels. And Because you know, your body is now thinking, I'm starving. Exactly. So it becomes a, you know, triple whammy. A cycle whammy. that... <laughs> right. <laughs> and the only way to break it is to, you know, sort of look at the factor that's causing your stress. Yeah. If it's a circadian rhythm, we need to sort of fix it and... Not everyone has the same rhythm. Obviously, we're different, yeah. you know, different parts of yeah. the globe, different rhythm. But exactly. even within the same time zone, people mm -hmm. would have different, different rhythms yeah. as well. You have to, um, you know, uh, either try a sleep doctor if you have serious sleep issues so that they can map your circadian rhythm and see your optimal time when your cortisols are up and your, I mean, it's worth looking into, especially if you're struggling yeah. with the, with obesity. Or stress. Or so stress. Uh, you'll notice that when you come to see a wellness coach, we would ask you a gazillion questions and you're thinking, but this is just my problem. I mm -hmm. just want to eat well. But we're asking you about your sleep patterns. We're mm -hmm. asking you what time, how many hours of sleep, what Absolutely. kind of stress. It's because it all ties in. Yep. One thing affects the other. Yeah. One thing affects the other. The second, um, so we talked about the circadian disruption, mm -hmm. right? Um, basically disruption in your sleep cycles and we're, the second, uh, hormone related obesity. Oh, sorry. Issue. Before you go into that, I just wanted to mention that for some people that put on weight during this lockdown, mm -hmm. it's mo, it could be also tied to this circadian ry rhythm. Disruption because, because yeah. everybody's timing has been thrown off. Some people who wake up at five to go yeah. to work can't even yeah. be roused by an alarm at seven a.m. Right I mean, now. usually I'd wake up before the lockdown, my eyes open about a quarter to four. Mm -hmm. Now, I know eleven. As in, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not even go there. Let's not. <laughs> okay. So the second, you know, the yeah. second issue we're going to talk about is drug-induced obesity. Mm. And you, yeah. you mentioned it the last time we yeah. were here about, you know, how people take certain drugs. Um, you think you're treating one problem and you're swapping it for another. Yeah. Very popular is birth control pills. Yes. Um, another popular one that causes um, weight gain, um, steroids. Steroids, yeah. Um, one of the steroids, uh, 
for asthma, for instance, prednisone, that's like an anti-inflammatory and yeah. helps to sort of shrink your adenoids. And I know that particularly, particularly because my son's on that. Um, and so the prednisone, those steroids can cause weight gain and as especially because they begin to mess with your estrogen balance and mm. your testosterone mm. and you see situations where um young boys on steroids begin to grow boobs and things like that mm. um antidepressants as well antidepressants as well you're uh, known you know, to throw throw hormones off and when you mentioned about birth control for women um also realize that things like the injection so i mean we mentioned pills but remember that things like um the birth control injections, mm-hmm. the coil that has the hormone right. in it, all of them still resp- and they still make your body respond the same way. Mm-hmm. And it could, and the majority of women actually experience that weight gain. Yeah. So it's important that you know um, that when you attention. do have your yeah, you yeah. pay attention and um, and see if you know you're not able to lose weight at the same rate that you used to after you've had your um, your thing put in. Yeah. Um, you want to go check it out and speak with your gyna about, gyna, you know, yeah. about that. There's also like seizure medications and mm. even, um, even medications for like antacids and heartburn medications can actually cause, especially if no, you I take them chronically. Yeah. They can actually cause, you know, if you take it chronically, as in taking it all the time, all the time, like you take them regularly, you take them maybe two, two three times a day. Oh, wow. You know, so one day. needs to actually be checking as opposed so if you're in that, on that table where you're taking, um, heartburn medication you need to be finding out what's the cause of this constant heartburn Absolutely. it's not yeah. a regular thing it's no. not normal yeah, so you should ERD, yeah you your, should find out what's going on there inflamed guts and things like that yes mm. so you need to you know and um and then there are some other um grave you know serious illnesses that would have heartburn as a side effect mm. right so um and then you have to then sort of do the heartburn medication as a way to manage the side effect of of some of these illnesses. So, um, so, so, so there you have it. Your drug induced obesity. If you're like even diabetic medication. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. If, if you're on any of those things and you're trying to lose weight at the same time, you want to take a chill pill. Don't beat yourself up and maybe have a more realistic approach, especially if you can't get off those medication, the medication, the medication at this point. But working you know. with a coach might help you just gradually start finding alternatives right. and um, and see how you can actually come off. I personally do not believe that any anybody should be on any medication long term. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that medication is an intervention. It right. should be for a short period of time. Yeah. And so you now make the lifestyle adjustments. Absolutely. Our philosophy proactive. Yeah, you know it's um and come off the that way medication your, your, your lifestyle is actually the medicine, the food exactly. we eat, and, you know our movements and things. Those like little that. habits we do every, every day, every day, yeah. absolutely. And um, like you said, the medication is an intervention, and if there's a way, you know, to come off it, that's what we do. You know, as yeah. wellness coaches, um, and you know, even even patients with PCOS, for instance, who are having yes. a hard time losing weight, can actually you know lose weight um, with those kinds of conditions. Yes, right. Yes, very true. So, and then the third, uh, last one is chemical, chemical exposure, exposure um, mm. also known as environmental um, chemicals. And that's a big one, I know, especially oh, for you. OMG, I was reading something just yesterday. Yeah. And, you know, the statement, the opening line was, our houses are the most toxic places Hmm. For everyone, and I thought, oh, MG, and I hate reading stuff like this. Yeah, but it's it just the makes truth. you feel so helpless. Yeah, you're thinking, like, where do, do I you go? Do? Yeah, what, where, where do you, where do you go? Because um, the chemicals in everything, right? And we use it all the time. We don't pay attention. So mm-hmm. from the soap, the hand wash that we're using, to the air freshener, mm-hmm. to the um, surface cleaners, mm-hmm. the floor cleaners, even the upholstery of our of our furniture, it's right. like. Right. Everything that's toxin in Even everything. Baby feeding bottles. Plastic. Yeah. We're all using plastic. We're all microwaving we're in the there. plastic oh. in the microwaves. You know, we're taking home the plastic bags. We're doing our Ziplocs in the freezers and then we bring the Ziploc out and we're popping it in the microwave. In the microwave. And so the... Or you cook your nicely organic food. You know, with nice organic ingredients. Yeah. It's nice and healthy. Yeah. But while it's still nice and warm, you feel like you need to clean up. So you take that nice healthy food and you stick it in a plastic bowl. And yeah. it's like. And the heat sort of, you know, and what happens it releases. when it releases. Yeah, it leaches into, 
Oh. You know, when you heat up plastic in the microwave, yeah. the you know the parabens and what's the other chemicals? It's they seep into the food into that we're the eating, food. and even some cookware, um, yeah, aluminum cookware, yeah, and even these popular non-stick pans, yeah, they're, oh. they're so toxic, especially they're when you start so, to scratch them. Yes, and um, you can even almost taste your cookware sometimes. Mm, yes, and um, when you use it too long and all of that, you can taste the metal. Yeah, um, in your food. So our ancestors used to use clay pots. Oh, well, clay pots! And are I hear amazing. that clay pots are much safer yes, than yes, they than are. the aluminium stuff right. and stainless steel stuff that right. we use. No, they are they are much healthier um, because the the chemicals in in the metal when they're heated up um, it releases into yes, your food. It, yes it does release into your food and you and you can actually it's, it's been it's been, been proven i've yes, seen it proven. the test the oh, test what's that cookware taste test yeah what yeah. is that cookware yeah, company that, taste masters or right, something like yeah, that so they do something where yeah. they do that yeah because they're trying to promote like titanium i think pots yeah but they're but, but the test they're. that they do, it really shows you mm-hmm. how the aluminium yeah. from your pots yeah. um, so slips the, into your food. So if we could use clay pots, honestly, that would be that would be something. I'm going to you know, in those. Yeah, but you know, modern day living makes it so hard to avoid these things. Um, and so how do we do? And, how you know, do we do? So I mean, all of these things. We're not saying it to scare you. Right. It's just for us to pay to, attention. It's the awareness, isn't it's it? The because awareness. By the time you're, by the time, um, you know, what's the word? By the time. You're doing all the work and you're, you're kind of trying to figure out what is going on. And, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not, you know, your, your calories are exactly where they are. Your macronutrients, nutrients are where they are. Maybe you're even eating organic. Um, and the, the chemical exposure to, you know, the exposure to environmental chemicals, mm-hmm. um, can actually disrupt the, your normal functions, your endocrine. Yeah. So they are called endocrine disruptors. Yeah. So they disrupt a lot of, you know, hormonal functions yeah. and you, you, you begin to see that weight gain is a side effect of these things yeah. or or difficulty losing weight. weight yeah i mean it you know for some people it's weight gain for some people it would just be allergies that flare up mm-hmm. and also you know pay attention to how it is that you're responding to right. So, I mean, if you're responding in a way that you feel like, okay, this is not normal. So you're always sneezing. Like I used to have this thing where strong smells would just trigger my nose. I'd just be sneezing until I realized that, oh, strong smells. Right. I know. Uh, but for some people, it could be weight gain. Right. That is just not going away. Right. It could also be a food intolerance, something that you are eating. Again, yeah. which is still yeah. tied to chemical exposure because yeah. by the time your food breaks, your food is broken down, your body becomes a chemical. Mm-hmm. So it still comes back to that. If you're taking something that your body is just not agreeing equipped. with. Yeah. Yes, that's, you know, that's the other thing. Um, I, I know we're talking about homo, um, hormones today, but just to throw it in there, that food intolerances are also a huge part. Um, because of your hormones. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they feed off and they, you know, they send a lot of signals that sort of st- start to clash. Yeah. And if some people don't know that they're they are allergic to milk or they do know, but they don't care. And so they take their cereal, you know, they have their cereal every day with full, you know, full cream, full cream. Um, you know, dairy products and all of that. And you be, it, what happens with intolerances is that they begin to um, scrape away at the lining of your of your gut. And and which is basically have, what inflammation. Yeah, and that's where the that's the cause know, of inflammation. And that's um, and I think we've done you know we'll link this to the other episode where we talked about, about gut in, health. Yeah. Um, we talked about gut health and how you can prevent you know um gut inflammations, especially by eliminating stuff that you're um allergic to. Yeah. Um, but you know, all in all, we we we're we're trying to raise the awareness of the fact that um. It is a multifaceted approach that we take yeah. nowadays as professional wellness coaches. So with obesity, a lot of people, so this is me asking you. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, when they're obese, you know, BMI over 30, blah, blah, blah. They're now thinking, okay, how am I going to shift this weight? Um, and most of the solutions out there, gastric bypass, liposuction. So... If one makes the lifestyle changes, like we've said now, so you look at your circadian rhythm, you try to reorganize your sleep patterns, 
you look at the drugs that you're taking, mm-hmm. you take yourself off those drugs and just find something that is more agreeable with your body. Mm-hmm. You clean out your your cupboards at home, remove yeah. all the harsh chemicals yeah. and all and get your movement in and, and get your, your so your diet. With all those lifestyle changes, one should start seeing results. Absolutely. One should start seeing seeing results when when you're when you've done the first obvious thing, yeah. um, which is and and it's great that we're talking about it in in terms of lifestyle changes. It's not a quick fix, yeah, um, because it takes we, a while. We, we 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 very likely didn't come to that weight in one you know overnight <laughs> exactly. And the reason why we emphasize lifestyle changes because we know that you know diets are designed to fail. Yeah. So we don't recommend diets or you know all yeah. that all those fad things. We know that you have to take it one day, one habit at a time, and at build. A time. You know, and, and eventually, once you're, you're 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 doing these things consistently, you should you should see results. results. I mean, even if you've had um, some lipo or whatever, you still need to be able to go back and maintain right. a certain kind of lifestyle yes. to maintain the results. Yes. We don't want to be going back to Dr. 90210. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. So yeah, so there you have it and um great stuff. Our next um, our next episode, we're going to continue with the obesity series and you know, we're going to talk about the interventions you spoke of, the medical interventions mm-hmm. that one, you know, one can take especially when your BMI is like way up there. Yeah. Um and hopefully, you know, have a a surprise guest on the show yeah with yeah. us um That'd be great and so until then uh thanks for listening in so our major takeaways today mm-hmm. watch your hormones yes. so hormonal imbalances could be the cause of um of the um Stubborn of fat. obesity mm-hmm. so hormonal imbalance could be caused by your circadian rhythm being disrupted so watch your sleep patterns yeah um the drugs that you're taking if you're any kind of medication just check it out. Find out. Read the small print. A lot of us do not actually read small print. Yeah. So read the small print on the side effects of the medication that you're taking. And then also, even if it's something like heartburn medication. Right. So check that out as well. And then chemical exposure. So be mindful of all the all the chemicals and the toxins that are toxins in your all house. over the house. So mm-hmm. do your investigation. And that's the thing about proactive living. You have to actually... Do the investigation. You have to ask. A lot of us don't even check the chemicals that are on the drugs that we're taking. Talk or, or on the um, containers of cleaning agents and stuff in the house that we're taking. Yeah, and so what they do to your body. And what they're doing to us. So we need to ask those questions. We need to be proactive so that we can live our best life. life. Absolutely. Living your best life is what we're all about. Exactly. And so, again, you can follow us at True Living Africa mm-hmm. and at Africa Business Radio, Instagram, Twitter, and www.africabusinessradio.com to link to our podcast and to listen to the previous episodes. Yes. So thank you, Africa. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Oin signing out. I'm Uyok signing out. See you next time. Bye. True living Africa. True living Africa